I think it's important that we spend a few moments to talk about the valuation of the synthetic human. Because I think that's going to be an issue, or maybe it is an issue right now, that we, we don't know the value of a synthetic human because we've always assumed, we've made the assumption that every human is natural. I've introduced the idea that there are these androids, these synthetic humans living among us. I am very certain of this based on my research now, which is going on 10 years. I have found increasing evidence of this new class of human being. The thing is, when, when we're talking about a synthetic human, we're talking about a human. We're talking about a person. We're not talking about a robot. We're not talking about a machine. So you have people today, <clears throat> you have people today, they want to, you know, buy a sex robot. They want a robot to serve them, to work for them because robots work for free. You can have as much sex with the robot because this, the robots have no rights. The robots, um, they have no feelings. The machines, it's just, it's just a machine. You tell it what to do and it does it. And when it breaks down, you fix it. So there's not much value in a machine, in a robot, as long as it does the work you want. And when it doesn't do that anymore, you can discard it, you can sell it. It's like a, it's like a mechanical slave. And that's fine for a machine. But when it comes to the synthetic human, which is what I've introduced, we have to we have to change the way we approach the value of a person. Remember, not so many years ago, we all believed, we were all certain that everybody, as, as you were, if you were a human, you were naturally made. <laughs> Aside from, you know, uh, some of the maybe genetic engineering, aside from maybe some of the hybrids, but the understanding was it's all natural. It's all organic. Now with the introduction of the synthetic human, that is changing. That's going to change. Because synthetic humans are a new class of human. They're new to our perception, to our awareness, but they've been around. I have shown in my evidence and research that they've been around at least a hundred years. But if you follow the logic, if you follow sort of the, the pattern and you follow the history of the, the world and the way populations work, we could go back thousands of years. Because remember, you know, in my thinking, in my research, and sort of in my background, my education says that there have been advanced races of people visiting this planet, that this is, you know, we are basically a, uh, an off planet. We are a planet that we're like a space colony. That's the word. This planet was colonized by people from other planets. We don't have necessarily an indigenous population because the population came from other planets. 
this is what not only my work has shown, but this is what uh, my research and my context have all confirmed. That we are a space colony. <laughs> so how does that connect to the synthetic humans? Well, people from other planets come from diff different technological levels. In fact, some, some races are very advanced and they have mastered synthetic DNA. They have engineered DNA. They have engineered human DNA in a computer. And they can take that DNA and they can uh, change it, manipulate it, edit it to a very high level in a computer. And then they can take that and print it out and they can print out uh, cells, they can print out embryos, they can print out whatever they need. That's my understanding. So the idea of a synthetic human has been around for a long time, maybe not on our planet. In fact, this is very new to our planet, it's very new to our understanding. You know, on other planets, it's been around, it's understood, it's accepted. So the, the idea, right, the idea of a synthetic human is a very advanced concept. This is not something that's going to step into mainstream understanding, mainstream media for a good many years. So we are still at an advanced stage, we are still we're still um, well far away from the future where we can sort of work with this information. You know, but when we realize, and as we're realizing that there are these people that are synthetic, that were manufactured, that came out, that their DNA came out of a computer. A DNA is just a technology, right? It's a piece of software comes out of a computer. Now some humans, they've been around longer or their DNA has gone through progression, through procreation, and they may seem more natural. We don't know the origin. We can speculate. We can suggest that even that DNA came out of a computer. <laughs> when we take into consideration that on other planets they had computers, maybe not the same as ours, when we take that into consideration and we go back thousands of years, so that the origins of DNA was from a computer. And maybe that a certain species or group of people have been procreating for thousands of years. So their DNA seems natural because it's been in existence for thousands of years or hundreds of years. Again, I'm not a DNA expert. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a specialist in genetics. Geneticist. I'm not a geneticist. So some of that, the longer lineage of DNA seems natural. It's more settled. It's got more, it's got more chips in the paint. <laughs> so it looks like it's, it's worn in. Whereas the synthetic human, there's a little more perfection to it. There's a little more engineering to it. There's a, an architect. There's a, there's a designer. There's a, a genetic designer. And they've put in a few little additions. They've added a few extra genes. Or they've turned on a set of genes. And sometimes the designers can communicate to their puppets, which is another discussion 
uh, but it'll be important in the future because if you're able to create if you're able to create DNA in a computer you're able to program a link a communicative link to that being whether it's through a computer whether it's through um, a frequency whether it's through a network that is going to be something that's not very difficult to put into the system if you're able to engineer and design a human being if you're able to design a human being you can put in these additional genes networks modems uh, back doors you would do that as natural and you wouldn't find this on everybody but that's a separate issue <laughs> we're talking today about the value of a synthetic human because it is easy it is easy since we're we're at the early stage of programming to think of it as a robot an Android a a machine and my approach is that it is not a machine it is by every definition a human maybe a better human if there's such a thing as a better human maybe a human that's more awake or maybe a human that can have this connection to a more advanced um, person so they have more insight they can be they can be sent information they can be given insight they can be put on a certain path so they're they're better because they have more features more functionality they're the luxury version of a car you know the car you have the base model you have the uh, sport model and you have the luxury model and in every model of the car you can have these options you can have a base model with a bigger engine you can have the sport model with the leather seats and you're gonna have the luxury model with the bigger tires the human being is the same thing I can get a synthetic human base model with a few add-ons a few genes I can get the sport human <laughs> and we can get the luxury so there's different grades there's different types there's different technologies as well as there are different uh, manufacturers which is a, again another discussion we'll have to table for the future because you're going to get different manufacturers and they have just like it like in I you know I look I compare it to the car manufacturing there's a there's a Toyota there's a Mercedes there's a Ferrari there's a GM they're all cars and some people like GM and some people like Mercedes and some people like Lexus all of them are cars uh, and they each have their own features they each have their own benefits they each have their own appeal size shape horsepower uh, interior comfort so the human being has different manufacturers the synthetic human has different manufacturers and they each bring their own particular expertise and this manufacturer is better at these components these genes this manufacturer is better at these genes and this manufacturer is better at these genes again that's we're gonna have to table that because again that gets quite it's a longer discussion and uh, it's not filled with evidence <laughs> it's hard to prove it's hard to prove or it's hard to talk about these manufacturers until we've we've come to the agreement that there are synthetic humans and that there are differences 
once we get to that level, then we can say, okay, Paris mentioned manufacturing, engineering. What, I don't know what, I'm not sure the type of lab they use specifically, but I would say there's different groups. And then, you know, and sometimes there's always a new group that'll come in and it'll, it'll back engineer some technology and they'll try to do stuff. So you're gonna get, you're gonna get these um, lower quality people as well. But in all cases, when you look at a synthetic human, and if some of you have been following my work, you've, you see these synthetics and all of them have a soul. A soul. They have a soul. They have a life force. A spirit. So, no matter what the vehicle is, it can embody a soul. A higher being. A higher frequency of being just like you and me inhabit a soul right we embody this life force whatever term we want to call it and the synthetic human also has a life force so they're not a machine per se even a machine when you look at a machine, it's operated by software. And the software is basically the, you know, it's the instructions, the set of instructions to tell the machine what to do. If you push button A, you get black coffee. If you push button C, you get a cappuccino. That's software, right? Software is telling them what it is. In the person, the human being, the software is DNA. DNA is a very, DNA to me is a very advanced software hardware program, extremely advanced. And it has a digital component, as a digital component in the digital realm. And it has the physical component in the physical realm. And when you wake up spiritually, you are connecting to your digital DNA. And then from the digital DNA, you're connecting to the computer, the server. God. So that's, that's, my, that's my shorthand, that's the shorthand view of this ascension, of this waking up. And I've written several books, I think four or five books, that goes through all the research to explain all that. But essentially, you have your DNA, your physical DNA, in my cells, and that, and you have the digital DNA. Now, when you, when you activate your DNA, when you go through that initiation, Whatever means that every everyone has a different process, right? And, and not everybody's going to wake up. Some people don't need to wake up. Some people only need a little bit. And some people need to go as far as possible. So you, you never have to think that you need to wake up, like to the supreme level, to, to activate your supreme intelligence. <laughs> You don't have to. Not everybody has to do that. Uh, and a lot of it's programmed through your age, through your maturation, that as you get older, you naturally, uh, genes are triggered and they turn on and you connect closer and closer to God, the universe, right? The, the older you get, it's called wisdom. I understand more, I know who I am better, I don't need to do all the dumb things I did as when I was young, I'm more spiritual, I'm connected to people, 
I love nature, I go in my garden. A lot of things lose importance because you're you're now you're ascending through age. Because things are programmed through age. Now some people need to go through ascension. Uh, and they want to wake up without aging. And they have their reasons for that. I'm not against that. But we don't all have to do it. And some people who have to do it are not doing it. And some people who don't have to do it are doing too much. And you have to kind of find that balance. I'm a person who was happy to, to wake up to a, a very large degree but then was basically shoved further and further. And I didn't want to go further and further because I was quite happy. I was very happy with the, the extreme amount of knowledge that I had gleaned. In fact, I would discourage some people to learn the truth about reality because it really, it makes you want to throw up when you know what's really going on. So there's, <laughs> there's, you know what I mean? You wanna, you wanna know, but the truth is very sobering. Uh, and after a few big shifts, I was very sober. And you go through that depressive state because you realize your life is built on these illusions. You realize what's, the way the world is structured is not so great. And then you realize your true nature, which is even, which is even more difficult to digest. So I went through that process. I'm not, um, I mean, sometimes people don't, because maybe I don't have a certain level of fame, people start to think, well, maybe he doesn't know anything. But, you know, again, that's an illusion that I have to be famous to be awake. In fact, I've met some people who are very awake and nobody knows about them. And they're happy that way. I would be happy to be awake and to have very little recognition. So I, I, I don't mind the sort of the little recognition I do get. Um, so there's kind of there's a balance. You don't need to be famous to be awake, and you don't need to wake up to be famous. And you know you can have both at the same time. You can have neither. When I speak about ascension and waking up, I've gone through the process many times. I've gone through initiations, and my proof is if you, I mean if you need evidence, you can see by my books. I've published sixty books. You can't publish 60 books unless you have something to say. And 60 books, you better have a lot to say. It takes somebody, you know, most of their life to write one book. Because you have nothing to say. So, what I've learned, I've shared through the books, I've shared through the videos. And there's been a number of discoveries. You know, we started out talking about star beings and we're talk, we've talked about androids, right? Uh, we've talked about incarnation, karma. We talk, we've covered a lot of ground. That's not something, that's something, you know, that's something that comes through this waking up, through this ascension. The, the big difference with me is, you know, I didn't do psychedelics. I didn't go, I didn't go to Peru and live with the shamans. You know, um, I did. I did have interaction with Stellans, but even they don't tell you things. You know, they just kind of make sure you stay on the path. The synthetic humans is is primarily my work. I would say ninety nine percent of it is my work, and the the awareness of it and the knowledge of it is buffered by my limitations. I don't have a, a doctorate degree in synthetic genomics. I'm not a microbiologist. 
I'm not even a roboticist. So the, you know what I mean? The, the, the discovery is big, but it's buffered because of who I am. So that, and that protects the information to a certain level. And because I, maybe I don't understand everything and I haven't uh, gotten all the details out as people expect, that again, that buffers that discovery so that no one, not everyone has access to it. Not everyone will believe me because I don't have enough credentials. And the evidence maybe is not uh, convincing enough. So only a certain group of people can follow. Only a certain group of people can understand. And that's, and that's enough. That's what is needed. Right? And maybe that's why I'm still around. Because had I brought, had I shown the lab where people are made, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> that's just a fact. So, it's good for me and it's good for you that I'm not as smart as I should be. But that doesn't invalidate my discovery. In fact, the Synthetic Humans is an, is a, is an incredible, it's an, an amazing discovery. It's a very, again, it's one of those sobering realizations that we are populated with these designed human beings and the people who made them got to be very advanced and that would be more evidence that there are these advanced races here i mean that's the way a lot of time this is the way i work is maybe i don't have the the degrees and the evidence that i need but i use real evidence like if there's a synthetic human and then someone made them. And if we don't have the science to make it, then someone who has a more advanced science made them, or designed them, or engineered them. And depending on how advanced they are, that they can embody a soul, and they can look perfectly human, and they can procreate, then that technology, imagine the technology to create a human being. We don't have that in conventional science. We don't even have that in the black projects. So who is making them? Somebody very advanced. We're talking a thousand years ahead of us, at least, in, te in technology. A thousand technological years ahead of us. So again, that's the way I work, because I've discovered, you discover a 747, under the Great Pyramid, right? And you say, well, the Great Pyramid was built 5,000 years ago. What is a 747 doing under the Great Pyramid? It means somebody had the technology to build a 747 5,000 years ago. So they were very advanced. So the synthetic human is like a 747 being discovered under the Great Pyramid. It's a huge discovery, right? Because we, we can't do it. And not even in the Black Projects can they do it. So who can do it? So they're perfectly, these are perfectly human beings. I mean, they're humans. Uh, I think, we, I think we should respect that, the fact that they're human beings. They're not machines. And there's more than one, there's more than 10. There's more than 20. And there's more than 50. <laughs> there's a lot of them. So we gotta keep that in mind. That, you know, because you can say, well, they're just a machine. No, no, they're people. My, my approach is they are people. Uh, they're, human, they're humans. They're synthetic humans. They're new, newer models of a, of, a, of a human. 
and that's just something we're gonna have to work through that you know we're all equal we're all uh, if you embody a soul you know you're entitled to be treated with a certain amount of respect.